Good afternoon, beautiful people. Welcome to another Technical Tuesday episode. So we put some questions, we put a questionnaire out on Patreon and asked our patrons, what do you want to see from Technical Tuesdays? What subjects would you like us to cover? And the answer we got most was, can we do a tour of the boat? So yes, we'll do a tour of the boat. However, what I thought we'd do is rather than just showing you the boat, we're also going to talk through some of the reasons we love this boat, some of the features that we built into this boat and what we look for in a dedicated offshore liverboard cruiser. Now, this is what's important to us. It doesn't necessarily mean it's important to everyone, but these are the things that we have chosen. And now, I suppose, after doing 20,000 miles to Atlantic crossings, and we've lived on board for four years, we have some idea of what suits us as a couple, two relatively young people cruising the world. So this is our explanation, our boat tour, and our rationale behind choosing this. So the first space I want to talk to you about is the cockpit. I believe that the cockpit is the most important space on any boat. The reason for this is for all of us, or for most of us, apart from those crazy buggers that want to go off and kind of do high latitude sailing, the cockpit is the place that you are going to spend most of your time. We left England to come to the sun, whether that's European Mediterranean sun or Caribbean sun, either way we wanted to kind of look for the sun. So the living space for us is more outdoors than it is indoors. So this cockpit that we have here is exactly what we wanted and what we needed for living outdoors in warm climates. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the two separate areas of this cockpit. One is the area which we use for sailing, and the other is the area we use for kind of chilling out, relaxing, eating, dining, playing guitar, drinking beer, drinking beer, drinking beer. Did I say that three times? Yes, I did. Anyways, this is what we're gonna do. So firstly, let's talk about the sailing. The helm position for any sailing yacht is obviously crazily important. You have to have good visibility and good comfort, and also good accessibility to the, the yacht and its controls. So as you look, you can see on our port hand control, we have steering wheel. We also have the control for raising and lifting and dropping the keel. So that control is at our fingertips, as is the bow thruster, the autopilot, and the windlass control. It is really, really important for a sailing yacht, especially in the med, to have a windlass control at the helm, because if you are doing stern, to mooring, you need to be able to pay out your anchor as you reverse against the dock wall. Just a little tip there. As you can see from the other helm, it is similar. We just have the addition of a radio there so we can call or make any calls from the cockpit rather than having to go below. Now, one important feature that we've put into this boat is the position of the plotter. As you can see, the plotter is facing centrally at the moment, but we have it on a rotating pod. Now, what this means is that we can sit in any position in this cockpit and still see all our instruments, whether that's the plotter, the radar, the AIS, which means that on watch, you can actually sit in the central body of the cockpit if the autopilot's on and you haven't got to use the wheel. That means that you're safer, you're more protected from the elements and it makes it less tiring. So that's a really useful feature. And I shall just demonstrate how this pod can swivel and be placed in any position for someone to watch. So as you can see now, whoever is sat on port side can basically get themselves comfortable, tether themselves on. If it's raining, we can put down side flaps. And again, you've got a nice protected deep cockpit. So again, just discussing the sailing aspects of this cockpit. The first thing to note is that we're all our lines lead aft. So no one has to leave the cockpit to do any sail trimming, putting sails down. Again, a really useful sailing feature. In addition, you may also notice that we have a, a power winch and that power winch, we've had a little bit of grief on the internet for this. Oh, why, why have you got a power winch? Why have you got a power winch? You're not real sailors. However, and this is the point I continue to make, Teresa is five foot two and weighs, I'm not quite sure, but I don't ask, she's tiny. Anyway, the point is that if I was to fall in, heaven forbid, in wet weather gear, she would never be able to get me on board. Using a power winch, you could put a line around me and winch me on board. I'd probably break a couple of ribs, but you know what? Who cares? It's a safety feature more than anything else. Now, moving on to the really cool thing about this cockpit is its size. It's size for a 40 foot boat. Now, you may have seen the episode where we made the cockpit cushions, we've kind of redid the cushions in some umbrella. This is an area that we just about live in. It is comfortable, it is 
fit huge. And we've got friends that have got a Discovery 55 and I'm fairly sure that our cockpit is bigger than theirs. It's large, it's also airy and it's well protected with a bimini. So we can sit here, there's always air coming through the boat and essentially it's a really comfortable living space. I think that one thing that we look for in any boat, in any boat that we buy or any boat that we look at is can we live in the cockpit? And so that is to do with comfort levels and more importantly that ventilation. Do we have the right ventilation? So again, things to look for and we do love this cockpit. So welcome to the saloon area of Ruby Rose. This is one of the real selling points when we first looked at Southerly Yachts. For us, we wanted a space that was beautiful where the joinery was kind of really high quality, where it had some really beautiful design features. I mean, these chain plate fittings are functional, but yet they look really nice. The entire boat is done in cherry wood with leather. It just kind of, it feels nice to be on board. It doesn't feel cheap. It's got a lot, a lot of light. I mean, we've got six windows here and then five opening hatches just, just in the saloon. So it's a really lovely place to, to live in. Um, both settees turn into lead birds for, you know, when we're on passage and we can both stretch out. I mean, I think a seven foot basketball player could sit, uh, lay on that sofa. It's so long. So. We've got a lot of space and a lot of storage in here and it's a very comfortable place to live, you know, when it's not so hot that we have to kind of hide down in here. Out of the darkness Into the light Won't let it go Thing missing on a lot of production yachts nowadays is a decent char table. This is a is a half size char table, so you can get folded full size Admiralty charts in here. It's something I really like. I like a chart table. I always find boats without chart tables a little bit kind of like, where are your charts? But it's a nice area to sit in. It's comfortable. It's comfortable to sit in even in you know a seaway. It's got like a lot of uh, fiddles to hold onto, and there's handrails throughout this boat. But as an area, it's fantastic. You know, we've got all our comms equipment. So between satellite phone, backup VHF, VHF, SSB. And another feature that we really kind of love, we have gauges that show each of our renewables. So we can monitor how much energy is coming into the boat from both solar, uh, the hydro generator and the wind generator. And then behind me here, we've got inverter controls, heater controls, and other controls. It's a, again, a nice space either to, to work out when we're editing or doing other bits and bobs when we're in port or when we're at sea and we're actually using it for kind of downloading emails or you know, communicating via VHF or SSB, a nice, safe and comfortable place to be. So again, another selling point for this boat that we really kind of wanted to kind of put across to you. What's your collection? What is your We have a fully functioning galley covered with white Corian work surfaces, a hob, a grill and an oven, a top loading fridge freezer and a double sink. It's small, compact and has everything we need for cooking at sea or in port. The aft cabin on the Southerly 38 really was the selling point for us. It has a full queen size double bed as modelled by the lovely Teresa and she made it an absolute requirement, didn't you? That we had a bed that we could sleep in comfortably, had good ventilation and good lighting. The cabin is served by two opening hatches, two high quality Caframo fans and has two side sofas for sitting and reading on. Moving on to the fore cabin, we have a very large fore cabin. It has a, a seven foot V berth, believe it or not. The boat comes with two heads, forward heads and aft heads, uh, which have their showers. And again, we have lots of storage space, lots of wardrobe space, lots of amazing woodwork and light. And the final thing we have is some storage between the saloon and the fore cabin, which gives you the space to put a washing machine if you want to, or just keep your DVDs as we do. And as for sailing abilities, well, 
I'm sure you've watched the videos and you know what she can do. She's equally as happy ghosting through the Bahamas in less than three feet of water with white sails as she is with a keel fully down, crossing oceans in all sorts of inclement weather. She will sail upwind at 30 degrees. She will sail downwind under power sailor or under white sails. Or we have the optional code zero for those really light wind days when we can just ghost along the coast. All in all, I have yet to find another boat that fulfills as many roles and is as comfortable in as many different conditions as this boat of ours. So you can learn to be kind. And when we're finished with our sailing for the day, we can take the boat into anchorages where very few other boats can get to, pull up the keel, drop the anchor, and enjoy our evening, sundowners, and a beautiful sunset from the cockpit of Ruby Rose. Hope you guys enjoyed this tour of our beautiful Southerly 38. Yes, we're biased, but we really do think that she is the best liveaboard cruiser to take offshore, or not to take offshore, that you can buy under 40 foot. And actually, even above 40 foot. I don't think there are many contenders. She has the most beautiful, spacious aft cockpit, aft cabin, big queen size island berth, inside in the saloon, the galley, she has everything that you need. She has so much internal space that people who come onto this boat for the first time really genuinely can't believe it. So uh, that along with the lifting keel, we can take her anywhere in the world. We love her so much. <laughs> Leave your comments down below, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you have any other thoughts on the, on the subject, we would love to hear them and we always try and respond. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you really feel, but thumbs up are better. And we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. There we go. Cheers, bye. You are not going to believe this four cabin. Told you.